Welcome to Sheboygan City Desk. I'm Mayor Mike Vandersteen, and hosting the show with me today is our City Administrator, Daryl Hofflin. Welcome, Daryl. Thank you, Mayor. Today we have a special guest, Natasha Torrey, who is the judge for the Sheboygan Kohler Municipal Court. Welcome, Natasha. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Um, first of all, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about um, how long you've been the municipal judge for the court. Sure. I was elected in April of 2015, and I started my term May 1st of 2015. Okay. And, and how long is your term? It's a four-year term, so I just just past that halfway point. Okay. Uh, Judge Torrey, can you uh, provide for us a little bit of background regarding the court itself? Uh, how many years has it been in existence? Sure, the court was created in 2007, so it's in its 10th year, and I'm the second judge uh, that's been able to serve in that capacity. In the beginning, there were approximately 8,000 uh, citations that were processed that first year when we were transitioning from having the circuit court primarily responsible, and then that's pretty much studied um, and leveled off at about 6,000 a year. My understanding we're not the only municipal court in uh, Sheboygan County. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of the other communities. That's correct. So what makes us unique yeah. is that we're a joint court. So we have an agreement with the village of Kohler that we would be the court for citations issued in the city of Sheboygan and village of Kohler. In the rest of the county, there are several other municipal courts. There's one in Plymouth, Elkhart Lake has a municipal court, and so does Sheboygan Falls, but they're all separate. Um, how many municipal uh, judges do we have in Wisconsin? Right now, there are approximately 240 uh, municipal judges in Wisconsin, but most of those are in rural communities. And so because of that, most of those judges are solely part-time. I believe there's only about five full-time municipal court judges in Wisconsin. A uh, question for you is um, the credentials. Uh, my understanding there are options for communities as far as what's required of someone who's, who's running for the position of a uh, municipal judge. That's true, and that's what I think um, a lot of people find <coughs> most interesting is that you don't necessarily have to be an attorney to be a municipal judge by statute. So there is a statute that governs municipal courts and how they're set up and what the qualifications would be, and it specifically states that you don't have to have a law degree. And the reason for that is because, again, there are so many smaller communities uh, in the state that have municipal courts and it would be cumbersome and cost prohibitive to require that you would have attorneys serve in that capacity because some of these municipalities might not have an attorney that lives there. I have to be a resident of either the city of Sheboygan or village of Kohler if I'm going to serve in the capacity as judge. So, so that, would, that would be an issue. Uh, the position is part-time. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, your, your career or prior experience. So I graduated from the University of Wisconsin Law School in 2001. The city of Sheboygan does have a requirement that the municipal judge be an attorney, and that's because of our size. And so most larger municipalities like ours, where we're over $50,000, 50,000 people, do have that requirement, and there, and there, there are several. <clears throat> and, and so again, we're one of those. I have been practicing in Sheboygan for 14 years, and prior to that, I practiced in Green Bay and Milwaukee. Where is the uh, Sheboygan uh, Municipal Court located? The Municipal Court is located at 1315 North 23rd Street, and it's in the same building as the Police Department. It's a beautiful location uh, that was created for us when they moved the Police Department from the City Hall building um, right off of Kohler Memorial Drive. Can you tell us about um, the synergies and how that, uh, that, that helps to be located with the police department, co-located there? Well, it's really important to, to make it clear that the municipal court is separate. We are in no way affiliated with the police department. We're not an extension of the police department. We are completely separate. But the fact that we do have the police department located so close is convenient for safety reasons, but it's also convenient for police officers. So they are able to, for instance, work 
in the department on other matters while they're waiting for trial. Um, sometimes they might be called in unexpectedly for testimony and the fact that the police department is right there makes it more convenient to do that. And well, I know you've changed the hours recently that uh, people can access the court and, and uh, uh, conduct paperwork or pay fines. Can you give us a little idea what those hours are? Sure. The actual desk is open. So the court office is open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. What has changed is that now you can call and leave a message 24-7 and that message will be answered, but you can also pay online and that option is also available 24-7. And we have um, QR codes that we attach to every correspondence and every order from the court to make that a little bit easier to pay online. Plus there is a box that can be used. There's a drop box um, right outside the court and then there's a drop box outside of the building. What else has changed is that the police department has also made themselves available if people do have some general questions or they want to make a payment of cash without leaving that in the drop box. And so they're doing that daily between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. before we open and then in the evening uh, between 4.30 and 7 p.m. when we close and then also Saturday mornings. So that's quite a, quite a few more hours that the court's accessible now. Now, does the court ha hold any hours in the evenings or is it all during the day? We have uh, all of our hours during the day except for Wednesdays. And the Wednesdays are the day that we have initial appearance hearings. And so because of that, the court is open generally till 8 p.m. on Wednesdays. But if we would, for instance, have court go longer than that, then the office would stay open. Judge Torrey, you uh, mentioned uh, a couple of customer service uh, changes that you've made um, to the advantage of, of the patrons or, or customers of, of, of municipal court. Uh, if you could maybe touch on uh, the, re the advantages of having a municipal court over what was in existence prior, which was a circuit court. Sure. Well, there are advantages for both the defendants as well as the municipality. I think that one of the key advantages for defendants is the fact that if you receive a municipal court citation, that's a civil forfeiture. It's not a crime. The cases that we handle could have been crimes. We handle criminal code cases that have been adopted as ordinances by the, by the city council. We handle um, first, first offense OWI as well as local ordinances. Some of those offenses could have been crimes, but if it's cited in municipal court it's not a crime. Someone doesn't have to indicate on a job application that they've been convicted of a misdemeanor, and they don't have to disclose, again, that they've been convicted of a crime, but also it's not searchable. So in this internet age, even though employers aren't necessarily supposed to be looking up um, to, on, on CCAP or online to see if someone was charged, um, it, it, we know that it happens. And so for a municipal court, they're not posted online, and so that's, that's a big plus. I think that for a lot of defendants, one of the biggest advantages is the fact that you pay a lot less in forfeitures. So um, we have an example of a ticket that would be $30, so a $30 speeding ticket. If you were issued that $30 speeding ticket, you don't pay $30. If it's issued by the circuit court, you end up paying $175. If it's issued by the municipal court, you pay $98. So for every, every forfeiture that a person receives in municipal court, the defendant pays over $76.50 more per ticket but the municipality also gets $38 more. And I know that, that that's a little bit wordy of an answer, but, but we do have a slide today um, just to break that down a little bit. So again, $30 ticket. Once you add in all the costs, the amount, if it's a, issued by the circuit court, issued to be heard by the circuit court, the defendant ends up paying $175.30. The municipal court receives $25 of it. If it's issued by an officer to be heard by a municipal court, the defendant pays $98.80 and the municipal court gets $63 of it. So there's quite a big difference. And so that would be a benefit for both the defendant and the municipal court. Other advantages for the municipal court are the fact that if you have a municipal court 
then officers spend a lot less time waiting for trials. When there's a circuit court, the circuit court has to prioritize the trials that they hear based on sometimes the importance, the, the degree of um, technicality, perhaps sometimes, you know, I don't like to, to think that, that as a justice system that we see things that as more <laughs> grievous or, or again important than others, but it, but it is true that if you have a, you know, sexual assault case, that might take priority over a speeding trial. At the municipal court, that's not gonna happen because we only have non-criminal traffic. We only have local ordinance violation cases, and so they're all of equal import, and they all get their their due their time as as scheduled. Could you tell us um, a little bit about um, whether municipalities or cities are required to have a municipal court, and why they might make that decision? Municipalities are not required to have a <coughs> municipal court, and so that's why when I mentioned the municipalities in, in Sheboygan County that have municipal courts, I didn't include places like Howard's Grove or, or Oostburg or Cedar Grove because they don't have courts. And if there is a desire to have a municipal court, then basically people in local government, the council needs to um, get to come together and make that decision and then have the, the proper ordinance is drafted to form that court, and that's also governed by statute, what exactly has to happen in order to create a court. And the reason that I think uh, municipalities would want to have a court is because they have concerns about access to justice for their citizens. They have concerns about the fact that there is such a disparity with the amount of costs between having a circuit court um, and, and when you don't have one. I know that there are concerns about police time. I, um, when I was recently speaking with the village of Kohler police chief at a periodic lunch that, that we get together for, he explained to me that a big drive for Kohler and wanting a municipal court was that years ago, they would have someone um, where in Kohler they would be cited for some type of infraction and send it over to the district attorney's office because that was the way that things had to be done without the municipal court. And that there were several occasions where they would receive the documentation back seven years later, yellowed and, and coffee stained, and be told that, sorry, uh, too much time has lapsed. We didn't have a chance to prosecute this. And again, that's because of the prioritization. And when you have a municipal court, you don't have those issues. Cases are handled promptly. So I think that that could be a big reason for it. Now, I just got notice that I'm going to be serving on jury duty in the circuit court. Um, did, is, do you have anything, any jury type cases? We do not have uh, juries in municipal court. I, I mentioned before that we do handle first defense OWI cases. If you are issued a first defense OWI and you want to have a jury trial, then you don't have, you're not required to go through the court process at municipal court. You can indicate within 10 days of entering a not guilty plea in the municipal court that you want a jury trial, you pay a $36 fee, and then the case gets moved to the circuit court right away. Every other case has the potential to have a jury trial because every decision that I make as a municipal court judge is appealable to the circuit court. And so if you go through the process where you enter a not guilty plea and then have a trial, and then decide that you want to appeal my decision, you then have the option to request a jury trial. So first offense, OWI, right away you can go and have a jury trial. Every other type of infraction that you could be in municipal court for, you could potentially have a jury trial after you are not happy with, with the result of your trial. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned uh, when we started uh, today's program that it is a joint court uh, between the city of Sheboygan and the village of Kohler. Uh, are all the court proceedings held at the police station, at the municipal court uh, assigned space, or do you have our, hours and court proceedings in the village of Kohler? All of the proceedings are held at the municipal court, which is again located in the same building that we share with the police department, but it is separate. And we just have a separate time. Kohler initial appearance hearings are held the second Wednesday of each month at 1.30. And if there would be a trial needed for a Kohler citation, 
that would also be held on, on the second Wednesday, unless some other time would be more appropriate or beneficial. Otherwise, um, the first, third, and fourth Wednesdays are for the city of Sheboygan. And, and honestly, um, it's at the second Wednesday too. So every, every other Wednesday of the month, including the second, we have initial appearances for Sheboygan, but they're in the evening. So Kohler is during the day, second Wednesday, um, same place. Every other, every other Wednesday, we also have court for Sheboygan. Now, my understanding is part of your schedule, you do differenti differentiate between adult versus juvenile. We do. And those are the second and fourth Wednesdays of the month. And the reason that we differentiate is because juvenile matters are closed proceedings. Sheboygan has taken an extra step in providing that juvenile traffic is scheduled separately. So if you're 16 or 17 and you receive, or excuse me, 16 or, or under, and you receive a traffic citation, that is held on juvenile night. That's not necessarily required. Uh, but in, in Sheboygan, it's been determined that if, a, if it's a young person, then maybe they should have a little bit different treatment. Um, it, it's nice to get parents involved, and so those are held on juvenile night. And again, juvenile night requires that the hearings are closed. So basically, ch kids and their parents come in, they check into the office, they come into the courtroom, I'll give my opening statement, but then when I address the subject matter and get into details of what happened on the cases, if that becomes appropriate, those are in my chambers. So those are private. Could you review a little bit the different types of cases that uh, come through the court? Yes, so again, we've, we've discussed non-criminal traffic, so that would be traffic offenses like speeding or deviating um, from your lane, running a stoplight, cases where there was no, no one was seriously injured or it was a first offense to OWI. Then our local ordinance has adopted several crimes um, and made it part of our ordinance. So for instance, trespass, disorderly conduct, shoplifting. The police officers, when they encounter someone who is maybe engaging that behavior, have the choice to, to write a ticket either under as a municipal court citation or have it referred to the circuit court. And so we hear those offenses where the officer chose to write a municipal court citation. And then also local ordinance violations. And so that could be parking violation, building code violations, um, and zoning. Those are, those are the type of local ordinance cases that we hear. Now, um, we've, we've added some uh, inspectors to our, our building inspection program, code enforcement officers, and I understand that they are writing quite a few citations. How has that affected the, the, the court's traffic? Has it been that much of, uh, to handle? Well, last year we had approximately 300 cases that were scheduled for trial, and then a third of those we actually had to have trials on. So we had approximately 106 trials last year. Um, I haven't broken it down, but I can tell you just from my personal um, experience and memory that a good chunk of the trials that we have are for building code um, violation cases, but the, the amount of citations that have been written has gone down, and they've gone down significantly during my time. And in 2015, we had over 700 citations that were written for building code violations, and last year it was a little less than 500. And I think that the reason for that is because we have had these extra officers uh, patrolling the neighborhoods, having conversations with people, making people aware of what resources are available to fix their properties. I know that in every, every warning letter that goes out, there's information about Habitat for Humanity. There's information on resources to contact, to get help, to fix the roof that might be having shingles fall off or, or the paint that's, that's peeled and, and exposed the wood. So I, I would say that, that definitely the amount of inspectors and, and building code violation citations that are written impacts the court's busyness, but I, I see it as a, a very valuable uh, asset and resource. I can say personally, that program has, has changed my life. I mentioned that I have practiced in Sheboygan County for 14 years, but I lived in Oostburg for nine of those years. When I first 
moved or to the area, I worked for Sheboygan County and I moved from the Milwaukee area and I, I knew that it wasn't gonna be practical for me to drive on those roads um, for a long, long term. And I knew that Sheboygan was a place that I, that I wanted to be and that I wanted to work, but I was a little reluctant to move here because of driving on Erie Avenue and, and seeing the state of the homes. And in 2010, the city started to make a real concerted effort in that area to improve the, the aesthetics. But when you improve the aesthetics, you, you improve the quality of the whole neighborhood. You, you improve um, the desire of, of people like me who, who have no problem coming to Sheboygan to work and to eat, to want to live there. And so in 2012, I did make that, that decision um, to, to move to the city of Sheboygan. And I'm, I'm very happy with that. And I, and I love Sheboygan. But I do think that um, I have to give credit to that building inspection department, whether I knew it or not, that made a big impact in my life. Well, that's good to hear. And I know that <clears throat> those building code enforcement officers really do try to sell the big picture to the people that are getting citations and do uh, a little bit of education along with, uh, uh, with the citation for the work that needs to be get done. And I'm glad that's paying some dividends. That's, that's my understanding. <clears throat> and, and that's what I, what I hear in court. Judge Tory, uh, last fall you uh, commenced uh, participation in a state, uh, a, a sort of a revenue intercept or forfeiture intercept program. Explain a little bit about uh, the, the benefit of participating in that program. Sure. State <clears throat> Debt Collection is the name of the program and that's a program that was uh, created by the Department of Revenue to help municipalities collect um, outstanding debts. And so that could be parking tickets, it could be um, citations that, that were, um, that resulted in forfeitures to the municipal court, it could be um, debts for ambulance. And so basically how the program works is, if a person who owes money to a municipality um, is more than 30 days overdue, then the municipality needs, to send them a letter and warn them. Sir, ma'am, it's been at least 30 days since your forfeiture, since your debt was due to be paid. If you don't either make arrangements to start working out a payment plan or get it paid, then there could be other reper repercussions. Um, and, and those could be that we take the money from you by either levying your bank account, garnishing your wages, doing a tax intercept, or um, putting a lien on your property. So there, there are various ways um, that, of an enforcement mechanisms. And what's beneficial about this program is it takes away the um, onus on municipalities <clears throat> to basically be bill collectors, and it frees us <clears throat> up to do other things to help, to help citizens other than just trying to enforce forfeitures. Now, it's, I don't personally see the role of the municipal court as, as a source of revenue. <clears throat> I don't see it that our job is to make money for a municipality. But when someone is ordered to pay a forfeiture and they don't, I feel like that has to be dealt with. Because if we don't take that seriously, then what we're saying to our citizens is that this group of people that complies with the, the, the laws and pays their forfeitures, um, you know, are just out of luck. And this other group who receives a citation and doesn't pay a forfeiture, that's really, it doesn't really matter because we're not gonna do anything about it. And, and that's not fair. I look, a lot, I look at a lot of what we deal with in uh, municipal court as, as dealing with good people law. So we have these citations for not wearing a seatbelt. Well, that's good people law because we, we want to protect you, okay? We want you to be safe. We want you to think about what you're doing when you get behind um, the wheel or just in a car in general. Uh, you know, uh, statutes that we have to write to, present, to prevent homicide, well, you know, that's, that's not really good people law. That's, that's because we have people that do bad things. So in municipal court, a lot of what we do is good people law, but in order to keep people good, <laughs> and in order to 
really have buy-in, we can't have disparate treatment. And so SDC is just another mechanism that we use to keep people honest. And, and I'm hoping that it'll be successful. We have gained revenue from it, and that's great, and that will hopefully uh, benefit our citizens in other ways as well. What are some of the other challenges that uh, you're facing that we didn't cover yet? Well, I think that, you know, one of the, our biggest needs would be um, to address young people in our community, um, especially with, with truancy issues. I have, again, two nights a month for juvenile night because I was finding that one night a month wasn't enough. Part of what I have to do um, is, is have these little counseling sessions where I just meet a family um, for the first time and a child is in front of me for smoking marijuana or underage drinking. And sometimes these kids are 12 years old. And, and I'm supposed to quickly um, try to get down to the bottom of it. And I have these parents in front of me that are exasperated and, and they don't know what to do anymore. And, and then hopefully um, order them to participate in a program or do some community service and hope that it's all good. And I really wish that I had more resources than what we have. I was recently uh, did some job shadowing with a uh, municipal court judge in Milwaukee. And, um, and he would have kids come in front of him and, and the hearing didn't seem to be closed and he didn't ask any questions and he just ordered them off to this program. And I asked about that and in Milwaukee, every kid, um, there's funding for every kid to be basically followed with a social worker. So they have a contract with the social service agency and that child then has, a, has more follow, a following or backup. And so I wish that we would have something like that available to us here. Well, I can tell that you and your staff are doing a really good job. I appreciate you coming today and sharing uh, more information for the viewers of, of City Desk um, on how your court operates and the, some of the changes you've made since you were elected judge. Um, any, uh, you know, if people want more information, is there any place you can direct them? Well, we do have a link on the city website, and so if you would just go to the City of Sheboygan website, Municipal Court is a listed department. But I would also welcome people just to come visit us in court. The hearings are open to the public. I'm always um, willing to discuss issues with people or, or if they have ideas for, for how we can make the, the court more effective or efficient, um, I'm open to that. Very good. Well, thanks again for joining us. Thank you.